Good evening, I am Sauman Gupta and I would be taking a lecture on pain and ergonomics. All of you must be listening to other lectures on pain and therefore I assume you all have understood the underpinnings of pain production and how responses turn out to be. Pain at workplace is a different entity altogether and it's often the topic of discussion in ergonomics and prevention of musculoskeletal disorders arising from factors interplaying with an individual at workplace. So the objectives of this lecture are to develop an understanding on symptomatology of pain at workplace, understand predisposing factors and pain understand the focus of ergonomics and prevention of musculoskeletal disorders and understand the influence of participatory ergonomics in controlling pain. Now starting with ergonomics, uh, as all of you know that ergonomics is a science of fitting job to the worker and it involves several strategies but not limited to designing jobs, equipment and work tasks to fit human physical characteristics in energy limitations. Therefore, study of ergonomics involves study of body dimensions, which all of you know as anthropometry, study of mobility, that is the study of biomechanics and task analysis of different occupations, and studying body's stress behavior, that is psychophysics of an individual in performing the occupation force is a source of financial loss, lost production time, costly litigations and decreased system performance. Therefore the worker has to be matched with the task. As you all know the pain is vicious phenomena and until the person is put away from mismatched environment the person may not be relieved. This screen shows the report about the most common causes of pain in the workforce which range from healthcare to masonry. Interestingly with better designs there is not much report on problems arising with human machine interface. The rest of the job profiles you see on the screen show that workforce is always into awkward positions and holding hand tools. Globally India accounts for 17% of the work related illnesses and addressing the problem is negligent in India probably because it is difficult to get employment. We'll just concentrate on the main cause of pain in the workforce which will be limited to awkward positions, holding of hand tools and human machine interface. Let's consider human machine interface. The most common example of human machine interface is using personal computers. Here it is the configuration where humans can be a part of the system and continuous inputs are required in the machine for long durations or in a repetitive manner in order to operate a specific machine. The human body part remains in contact with the machines which might be operated in awkward positions. Just to consider an example, remember that the laptops were designed for the laps and not to be used on the tables. So now you imagine working on a laptop on a table and how discomfortable it is. All these factors result in work related musculoskeletal disorders and together they are all group of pain syndromes occurring soft issues due to exposure to risk factors. The mechanism of injury is direct cause of cumulative traumatic disorder which we'll be going through in detail in the coming slides. The point to be remembered here is that human computer interface may not be the cause of problem alone unless other individual risk factors come up. Awkward postures due to inadequate lighting and sometimes even the temperature may fire up the pain. Work-related musculoskeletal disorders are disorders involving muscles, nerves, ligaments, cartilage, joints, blood vessels, spinal discs and they are commonly seen in the work environment and it hampers the performance of the work 
the condition is made worse or persists longer due to work conditions and it mostly results from job tasks which require excessive force, repetitive movements, excessive bending, twisting and reaching and constant deviation from body's neutral postures in working environment. So here are some of the synonyms of work-related musculoskeletal disorders. They are also known by repetitive strain injuries, cumulative traumatic disorder, occupational cervical brachial disorders, overuse syndromes and regional musculoskeletal disorders. All of them are resulting from job tasks which require excessive force, repetitive movements, excessive bending, twisting, reaching and constant deviation from the body's neutral postures. The symptoms are poorly localized and are non-specific in work-related musculoskeletal disorders. They have both occupational and non-occupational causes which requires weeks, months or years for recovery. For example, back injuries from uh, they form the highest proportion of injuries in the workforce followed by injuries of neck and upper extremity and then comes the hip and knee. Several activities and job tasks are more likely to result in ergonomic disorders. Examples of these kind of disorders or awkward postures may be check out in a supermarket where the person is doing continuous scanning of the grocery, key punching, working at an assembly line in meat processing shop, sewing and knitting, packing, stapling, polishing, buffing, surface grinding, painting and other sports related activities for example golf. In particular, computers have been blamed for causing or contributing to workplace injuries uh, which requires prolonged key punching, constant switching of eyes between document and the computer screen, using telephone while typing or mousing, and inadequate visual attributes of the operator, that is uh, inadequate distance between the user and the laptops or the computers or visual display units are some of the conditions that result in disabling disorders in the workplace user. Let's have a look at what the awkward postures might result into. Like it has been told before, the awkward positions are found in almost uh, all kinds of jobs. They are extremes of joint ranges and then there is development of tension in the muscles at extreme ranges for a tight grip at awkward positions. Therefore, the awkward positions are not limited to certain jobs, but almost to all the jobs. Now, what happens in awkward postures? Postures are related to the geometry of the workplace and the size of the worker. They range from neutral positions to the limits of the range of motion. So, posture is related to the location all of parts, assemblies and controls, size and shape of the handles, orientation of the work objects and visual requirements. Posture is also affected by obstructions that workers must see or reach over, under or around. If the work is located overhead, as soon as often occurs in manufacturing settings, workers will have to stand with their hands above their heads and if the work is located on the floor, the workers may have to bend or stoop. It has been observed that work capacity is greatly reduced at very high and low locations. Awkward positions cause buildup of extreme internal forces, compression of blood vessels, ligament sprain, and they are all result of the awkward position. The resultants may occur after weeks, months, or years on the job. Soft tissue injury can also result from activities such as lifting, slips and falls. They can also develop gradually due to disuse, muscle weakness and as a result of cumulative wear and tear placed on the body when daily tasks are carried out in awkward postures. Now mechanical overload may also be present in form of pressure over the blood vessels, nerves and prolonged pressure over the muscles may lead to constant feeling of fatigue. This most of us must have experienced while sitting at the edge of the chair. 
Due to sitting over the edge of the chair, the posterior of the thigh is compressed for longer duration and the person feels fatigue. This may happen at any interface like forearms against the table or just like the example I gave before that is sitting on the edge of the chair. Muscle pain and fatigue are most common symptoms of cumulative traumatic disorders. Uh, muscular pain frequently follows acute trauma or muscular overexertion or may also develop in a delayed manner from unaccustomed exercise or static loading for longer durations. The precise mechanism for this pain is not yet established. However, literature suggests direct tissue injury, metabolic insufficiency, secondary to lactic acid accumulation, or local ischemic state as suspected mechanisms. In local ischemia, muscle fibers undergo decrease in blood flow as a consequence of increased tissue pressure associated with prolonged muscular contraction and compression against the supporting surface. Let's look at some of the risk factors in cumulative traumatic disorders. The first is biomechanical. The studies have found strong associations between biomechanical stresses at the work and musculoskeletal disorders. There is compelling evidence from numerous studies that as the amount of biomechanical stress is reduced, the prevalence of musculoskeletal disorders at the affected body region is also likewise reduced. This evidence points further support for relationship between work activities and occurrence of musculoskeletal disorders. Now coming to non-biomechanical factors are comprising of individual, organizational and social factors. They are the sources of variation in the workplace and it might directly affect the physiological pathways leading from tissue load through impairment to disability. Individual factors like uh, difference in susceptibility to the incidence of the disorders, severity and etiology places uh, are also a risk factor for development of work related musculoskeletal disorders in an individual. Organizational and social factors like variables of job content, job demands, including factors like job variety, identity, workload and time pressure constitute organizational and social factors stress. Poor job content that is poor task integration, lack of task identity and high job demands have been found to be related to higher rates of musculoskeletal disorders. In some cases these factors co-vary with physical factors. For example, high levels of time pressure can increase speed of the movement and hence the increase of dynamic forces acting on the tissues. When we discuss about the pathophysiology of cumulative traumatic disorders, we talk mostly of soft tissues which responds to physical stresses. Even at levels of force, clearly below the failure level, there is scientific evidence that tissue response to deformation can produce inflammation failure at microscopic levels and cause muscle fatigue. Low muscle contractions maintained for longer durations cause muscle fatigue. The exertion of body against an external object may also impose significant contact stresses on the surface of the body and these forces are transmitted to underlying tissues. External loads impose internal loads on underlying tissues. Exertion, posture, contact stresses, vibration and varying temperatures are acting as external stresses here. The intensities of exertions are related to weight resistance, drag, inertia and reaction forces of the work objects. Depending on the duration and intensity of the loads and recovery time, the responses may cause discomfort and impair performance. Fatigue is one such example. While fatigue can significantly affect workers' comfort and impair work performance, its transient response dissipates rapidly when the work stops. 
In some cases, however, loads are large enough or last long enough to stimulate acute tissue disorders. Although damaged tissue stimulates a healing response, healing may not be complete if the loads are continuously applied. The symptoms of work-related musculoskeletal disorders may vary with time and stages. It can range from mild to severe. In early stages, there might be aching and tiredness of affected limb due to work shift but it disappears at night and during days of the work. There is no reduction in work performance in early stages. In intermediate stages, there, may, there might be aching and tiredness which occurs early in the work shift and it may persist at night. It reduces the capacity for repetitive work. In later stages, there might be aching, fatigue and weakness which persists at rest and it may lead to inability to sleep and perform light duties. This slide shows some of the symptoms associated with occupational risk factors. In order to get a complete overview of the risk factors, a detailed task analysis is necessary. So here you find three columns. First column is the disorder, the second column is the occupational risk factors and the third column presents the symptoms. So you can see what repetitive motions, wrist motions and shoulder motions can cause in tendinitis and tenosynovitis. The symptoms are pain, weakness, swelling, burning sensation or dull ache over the affected area. Similarly, if you look at tension neck syndrome, there might be prolonged restricted posture of the neck which you can see and people performing the desk jobs, the computer jobs and the symptoms which are present are pain. Similarly, there are other, other kinds of disorders and their occupational risk factors and their symptoms. There are a variety of actions that can be taken in the workplace to eliminate or reduce the risk of musculoskeletal disorders. According to uh, Smith, um, the interventions include engineering redesigns, changes in work methods, administrative controls, employee training, organized exercise, work hardening and work conditioning, use of protective equipment and medical management to reduce the exposures. There are numerous assessments which have to be undertaken to determine whether all these actions singly or taken as a program for risk reduction actually result in observed benefits to the employees and the employers. The literature provides evidence that interventions of various types and complexity can prevent the development of musculoskeletal disorders in specific industries and occupational groups. The fundamental principle of occupational health and safety is to weed out hazards at the source. In case of work-related musculoskeletal disorders, the prime source of hazard is the repetitiveness of the work. Other components of work such as applied force, fixed body positions and pace of work are also the contributing factors. Therefore, the main effort to protect workers from work-related musculoskeletal disorders should focus on avoiding repetitive patterns of work through job design, which may include mechanization, job rotation, job enlargement and enrichment of teamwork. Here elimination of repetitive patterns may not be possible or practical. Prevention strategies involving workplace layout, tool and equipment design should be considered. When we talk about prevention of work-related musculoskeletal disorder by job design, we talk we think of mechanization. It is one of the ways to eliminate repetitive tasks. Wherever mechanization is not feasible, other alternatives are used. For example, job rotations. It is one possible approach if mechanization is not possible. It requires workers to move between different tasks at fixed or irregular periods of time, but it must be a rotation where workers do something completely different. Different tasks must engage different muscle groups in order to allow recovery for those muscles which are already strained. 
However, job rotation alone will not be effective in reducing work-related musculoskeletal disorders unless it is combined with proper design of the workstations. And it will not be effective if the work rate or the repetition rate is high. When we talk of job enlargement and enrichment, we talk about the variety of tasks that are built into the job. So we here we are trying to break the monotony of job and we are avoiding overloading of one part of the body or one particular region of the body. The job enrichment also allows the worker to put more efficiency and work in his own ways and it gives control and empower, empowerment to the worker. Using teamwork can also provide greater variety and evenly distributed muscular work. The whole team is involved in planning and allocation of work and each team member carries out a set of operations to complete the whole product allowing the worker, workers to alternate between tasks and hence it reduces the risk of WMSDs. When we talk about prevention of musculoskeletal disorders, we also think of redesigning the workplace. It is a guiding principle to fit the workplace to the worker. Now we have to evaluate the workplace and identify the sources of work-related musculoskeletal disorder. Proper designing of the workstation is required to decrease the effort of the worker and maintain the working position in neutral postures. Ideally, the workstation should be fully adjustable, providing a worker with the options to work in standing, sitting, sitting-standing positions, as well as fitting the body's size and shape of the worker. Another way of prevention of work-related musculoskeletal disorder is by using right tools and equipment design. Proper designing of tools and equipment significantly decreases the force required to complete the task. If the worker is provided with proper jigs, fixtures for holding elements, it saves a lot of muscular effort in awkward position in order to hold the object. Good tools therefore are required and are frequently changed and it also saves a lot of time and muscle strain. Next set of interventions is considered as work practices. Here we are talking about a well-designed job supported by well-designed workplace and proper tools. This allows the worker to avoid unnecessary motion of the neck shoulders and upper limbs and hence maintain a neutral posture. However, the actual performance of the task depends on the individual and their anthropometry. So therefore, training should be provided for workers who are involved in jobs that include repetitive tasks. Workers also need to know how to adjust workstations to fit the task and their individual needs. Training should also emphasize on the importance of rest periods and they should be taught how to take advantage of short periods of time between the tasks to relax muscles and how to consciously control the muscle tension throughout the whole of the work shift. Increased communication and support can also increase the ability of the worker to control his or her job wherever possible. This improves worker satisfaction and has a positive impact on reduction of work-related musculoskeletal disorders. Another work practice which can be considered as intervention or can be used as prevention of work-related musculoskeletal disorder is participatory ergonomics. Participatory ergonomics involves people in planning and controlling significant amount of their work activities with sufficient knowledge and power to influence processes and outcomes to achieve desirable goals. Here the actively involved workers in developing and they are they are uh, their experience is used in implementing workplace changes and improving workplace designs 
which uh, the employers think can improve productivity and reduce risk to safety and health. Now the underpinning assumption of workplace participatory ergonomics is that workers are the experts and if given a choice and with their appropriate knowledge, skills and tools, they are the best place, they are best to identify and analyze the problems and they can develop and implement solutions which will be effective in reducing injury risk and improving productivity and it will be also be acceptable to those affected. The common element here is to ensure utilization of expert knowledge that workers have of their own task by involving the workers and others potentially affected by the proposed changes. So in conclusion to this lecture, I would like to say or repeat work-related musculoskeletal disorders are most common disorders at workplace regardless of the occupation. Occupation-based task analysis is needed to identify the risk factors which may be biomechanical, non-biomechanical, psychophysical or environment-based or organizational factor-based. Hence, the age-old adage holds true here that is prevention is cheaper than cure and therefore every employee must go through job fitting analysis and timely intervention is required by the employee and the employers before the disorder spirals out of control to become an irreversible entity. Thank you.